Howdy, 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 my name is Anachi Sasuke, and welcome back to Let's Read the SP Foundation Wiki. In the last episode, we started with the basement cat, no, no we didn't, we started with the intelligent tank, and went up through the knife switch. Uh, the intelligent tank was interesting, Grammy Nose was terrifying, the transformational tomb of uh, Asa Rutledge was certainly a thing, the cheeky phone booth was interesting, and the knife switch is not even almost what I thought it was. It sounds like knife switches are honestly already a thing that exists that I had just never heard of, and I assumed it was going to be some sort of knife that, you know, attacks people. And there were no Keter last episode, but I feel like that might change this time around, because this time we're working with the post box, the blood draining carpet, the most unhelpful object on earth, Walter the omnivorous rabbit, and eye spiders. And if one of those ain't Keter, then I just don't know. So let's check out that dare post box. It's safe. SCP-521 is to be stored in a Securo Items Locker 15 at Site-39. The battery level of the GPS beacon attached to it should be checked monthly, with a new module fitted as module fitted as relevant. The steel plate covering the letter slot of 521 is to remain in place outside of authorized testing. After activation, 521 is to be retrieved from its new location and returned to storage with a new covering plate. 521-1 onwards are to be held in Archive 4 of Site-39, with digital copies made available on the Foundation intranet. Access to these documents is not restricted with the exception of 521-27, see below. Sounds like it's going to be there if it says see below. Description. 521 is a red post box of a design commonly used in the United Kingdom by Royal Mail. Retrieved from blank England, test, show, test results show 521 does not differ in composition from a standard post box of the same design. 521X refers to the items received during activation of 521. See below for more information. 521X are to be denoted numerically and stored per procedures above when retrieved. When a letter, letter here defined as a piece of paper contained within a suitable addressed envelope, is inserted through the letter slot of 521, the anomalous effects of the object will activate. No other items inserted into 521 will cause activation of the object. All letters must be addressed from one subject to another directly. Letters sent from a singular object to a company or representative of a company do not cause 521 activation or vice versa. Up to 24 hours after time of posting, regardless of stamp value used, the posted item will arrive at its destination along with any other standard mail items. The postmark on the envelope is not that of the Royal Mail Company but one similar to Redacted. However, the original letter posted will not be found inside the envelope, instead replaced with an instance of 521X. X appears to be letters written during periods of conflict often addressed from combatants to family members or friends. Comparison of historical records places the bulk of X items as occurring during World Wars 1 and 2, see Addendum E for examples. An exception is 27, see Addendum 7 for more information. A current theory suggests the items retrieved during testing are letters originally undelivered. Foundation researchers are currently attempting to trace possible relatives of the writers to verify this hypothesis. Once a suitable letter has been posted and delivered, 521 will disappear from its current position and reappear elsewhere inside an urban location within 150 kilometers. Its current method of movement is unknown, however any obstruction to the letter slot is removed during transit. No other parts of 521 are affected during its transit. Any mail items posted uh, uh, between activation and delivery will be processed normally. After 521 has completed a transition to another area, its effect will activate on the next suitable piece of mail. That sounds more like it should be Euclid than, uh, than safe, but I guess not, because, um, if you were to lock, put it, lock it in a room somewhere and not put mail into it, it couldn't disappear. Addendum E. Below are short excerpts of letters received during testing of 521. Copies of the original letters are available to be viewed on the Foundation intranet. 1. I told you in my aircraft a little about the journey here. Of course, I must not mention place names or any vital details. The boat trip did not seem overlong in spite of the confined space and lack of anything really important to do, but for the uh, for part of the trip I acted as one of the anti-aircraft gunners during two four-hour hunt uh, turns of watch duty in every 24, one of these of course during the night. 11. Dear Mum, Dad, You must by now be concerned not having had a letter from me in, for such a long time. Well, the news of the landings in Italy must by now be well known all of England, so I am able to tell you that about 70 lads, including myself, were drafted into the foresters to make up the strength, make them up to the strength for the assault on Salerno. We only knew it was for real when a dive bomber shot at us in the landing craft. Redaction on uh, present on original letter. My dearest Pammy, thank you for your letter, giving me all the news. 
I can, I can now give you a little more news from this side. We have just finished five weeks at blank blank, and are at the moment enjoying a rest by the Baltic coast in the blank area. We were given the blank job a couple of days after the place was captured, and we stayed to burn the pestilential huts to the ground, about five weeks altogether. And then 27. During test uh, D4, the retrieved letter was dissimilar to previous examples, only a short fragment of text was recoverable from 7 due to fire damage. Veronica, I send this letter as it may be my last. I'm passing it on to a civilian detachment headed away from the containment zone in the hopes it reaches you safely. I can't say much, but I just want you to know that I love you so much. I'm sorry for what has happened, I couldn't tell you before all this, but it's our fault. The letter is written on the reverse of a Kellogg's Cocoa Pops brand cereal box. The partial expiry date present gives an estimated production of January 21 something. The date of the letter's writing is currently unknown. So it sounds like this one is from the future, and it sounds like it might be due to some sort of event that happened in the Foundation itself. Or World War III. We'll never know. Um, next up is the Blood Draining Carpet. Which I'm going to assume is safe, because at this point, why not? A. SCP-522 should be kept in an airtight room with adequate light sources. Hazmat suits are strongly advised, as anyone leaving the room must go through a thorough decontamination process to prevent the potential spread of 522. How would you potentially spread a blood... Yeah, blood-draining carpet. At once every two weeks, one pig or animal of equivalent body mass is to be placed at the center of 522. Except for purposes of experimentation, at no point should any person stand on 522 while alone inside the enclosure. For this reason, all personnel entering 522's containment room should be accompanied by another person, so as to not be drained of blood properly. SCP-522 appears to be a standard swatch of red carpet, approximately 3.5 meters on each side. However, when a human being stands atop it, it wraps itself around the victim with surprising speed. Once the victim has been completely enfolded, thousands of hair-like protrusions extend from the surface of the carpet and dig into the victim's skin, quickly draining them of blood over the next blank minutes, which is a single-digit number, so that's terrifying. Also not sure why they felt the need to redact that. After draining the victim's blood, 522 unwraps and attempts, attempts to return to its original position, leaving the blanched victim in a heap at its center. Further investigation into the structure of 522 indicates that it is a normal red carpet that has been infested by a previously unknown form of fungus or slime mold. This raises the possibility that there may be other copies of 522 in the wild and necessitates the decontamination procedures to prevent any accidental spreading of spores on site. This sounds like somebody took a D&D monster and turned it into an SCP, just saying. Furthermore, the red coloring of the carpet is simply just that, the color of the carpet having nothing to do with the organism or the task it performs. Theoretically, 522 could live in any carpet of any color undetected to the naked eye. Of additional note, 522 appears to possess a rudimentary amount of intelligence. If another individual is present within the room, it will not attack unless it is in a position to overwhelm both people at once. Current observations show that it is also patient. How long it can go without feeding is currently unknown, see experimental log for more details. And it's in there. 522 was discovered during a murder investigation in the town of Blankety Blank when one of the investigating officers fell prey to its effects. The mysterious coincidence of two people being utterly drained of blood within the same building prompted the Foundation to investigate at which point 522 was discovered. The Foundation is currently assessing the viability of using 522 as a covert assassination tool. Research into breeding additional copies of 522 pending approval. Yeah. Experimental Log Experiment 1, a one disposable dude placed in the center. Results. Once security left the room, 522 immediately wrapped up and around the subject, so that it could be seen thrashing through the underside of the carpet. Total exsanguination occurred after blank minutes, at which time at which point the carpet released the drained victim and returned to its original state. Experiment 2, two disposable dudes in the center, engulfed both of them. Total exsanguination in probably that same amount of minutes. Two two disposable dudes in the center, the uh, one in the center and the other at the exterior edge. Even after security left the room, it remained in its dormant state. Experiment terminated after six hours of no activity. Uh, two disposable dudes, one in the center and the other off of it entirely. Even after security left, remained dormant, terminated as per previous. One disposable dude placed in the center. Uh, it was fastened to the floor with carpet staples. Results, 522 rips upwards with surprising force pulling the carpet staples from the floor. Total exsanguination, sang, exsanguinating occurred in the same time span as Experiment 1. Carpet attempted re to return to dormant state, but staples remain free. Experiment 6, one disposable dude in the center. A heavy desk was placed on the exterior edge. 
Result, 522 pulled itself out from under the desk and engulfed the subject. After draining the subject of all blood, it managed to wedge itself back into its original position, slipping beneath the desk. Uh, experiment 7, one rat at the center. And engulfed a rat, a total exsanguination occurred in blank seconds. No, from the doctor. You mean we could have been using animals all along? Damn it! Disposing of the remains would have been much easier if I had known that earlier. Well, maybe if you, like, maybe, 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 if you had thought to try that instead of just going, there's disposable right in their names, why don't we just use these people? We're going to kill them at the end of the month anyway. Ha ha ha! Dumbass. So, uh, experiment eight. Two rats, one placed at the center, the other placed at the opposite side of the enclosure acting as an observer. And engulfed the rat placed upon it despite the presence of the observer rat. Note from the doctor, curious. The only difference between experiment 4 and 8 are the species of the subjects in question, yet we see two totally different results. This bears further investigation. Experiment 8. Oh, uh, one rat placed at the center, one disposable dude placed off to the side acting as of the observer. It remains inert. Experiment 10. One disposable dude at the center, one rat off to the side. Total exsanguination occurred in blank minutes and blank seconds. It seems to be getting faster. Note from the doctor. It appears 522 is able to determine whether or not a person is in the immediate vicinity. How it makes the determination as to when it's safe to act has yet to be determined, but it does not seem to realize that we are observing it with the cameras. That sounds like it should be Euclid since it's sapient. So that brings us to the most unhelpful object on Earth. Is it Twitter? It might be Twitter. It's Euclid. Whatever it is. Um, SCP-523 is kept in a sealed room separate from the rest of the Site-19 complex. The room is set to self-destruct in the event of an XK-class end-of-the-world scenario to prevent 523 from worsening the situation. The walls of the room have been laced with 2 millimeters of lead in the hopes that 523 will be unable to escape once again. See below. 523 is to be removed from containment for per experimental purposes only and doing so requires permission from level 3 personnel or higher. Personnel experimenting on 523 should be accompanied by at least one person able to receive low-frequency telepathic signals. Personnel in the presence of 523 are instructed to alert one another before blinking. Performing dangerous experiments on 523 is strongly discouraged. Removing 523 for practical use is strictly prohibited. Description: 523 does not have a consistent physical form, nor does it have any distinguishing marks by which it can be identified. It does, however, emit a low-frequency telepathic signal, which persons capable of de detecting describe as a dull ringing sound. This signal can be used to locate 523 if it escapes. This frequency is also assumed to be the source of its ability to short out electronic recording devices such as video cameras and blank out camera film. 523 is able to jump across short distances while unobserved and disguise itself as any inanimate object, mechanical or otherwise. 523 will disguise itself as an object that a nearby human is likely to make use of shortly. Once the human is picked up, drawn their attention to, prepared, activated, or otherwise demonstrated that they are going to make use of the object, 523 will transform into a different object unusable or utterly inappropriate for the task at hand. These transformations can only occur if 523 is unobserved, but can occur in the blink of an eye. 523's transformations are immediate and usually extend beyond uselessness and into irony. Transformations range from extremely impractical to outright dangerous, including instances of data expunged. Lead appears to prevent it from jumping out of a room, but does not prevent it from transforming. It has jumped from containment multiple times and disguised itself as mundane but useful objects. Several accounts of such follow. Document 1. Victim. A doctor. Disguise. A scalpel. The doctor was preparing to perform a delicate autopsy on a recently deceased disposable somebody somebody, probably, who had been killed by SV Blank. He asked his assistant to hand him a scalpel. When he looked back at the body, he felt a sudden increase in weight from the hand holding the scalpel. When he looked at his hand, he found he was holding a chainsaw. Document 2. Victim Dr. Willis. Disguise a pitcher of water. Uh, Dr. Willis was on break in one of the on-site rec rooms when a fire broke out due to someone forgetting to take the tin foil off their baked potato before microwaving it. Dr. Willis grabbed the pitcher and, not noticing the liquid inside had changed colors after he picked it up, doused the flames in the liquid which turned out to be gasoline. Dr. Willis was taken in for treatment of second and third degree burns. Document 3, Agent Bl Victim Agent Blank Deceased, Disguise Regulation Foundation Pistol. Event, the agent along with a team of disposable dudes have been assigned to oversee an experiment on SCP-682 in which data expunged. Uh, 682 became enraged and began attacking the personnel. When Agent Blank reached for his pistol, he was surprised to produce a ring of keys. It was later discovered that the blades of the keys were all dull and unfit to open any door. Note, 
Since it seems that 523's transformations are more or less proportional to the gravity of the situation it's being used for, it is imperative that it be destroyed immediately in the event of an XK class end of the world scenario as it may turn into something that would further exacerbate the situation. Like the sun. Dr. Willis. Okay, so that's hilarious. But, um, next up it's time for Walter the Omnivorous Rabbit. Which is safe. Because it's a rabbit. As it has a benign nature, but wait, hold on, hold on. Before I even almost continue, I must just stop right here before I read anything else, and I want to say that this is probably the rabbit from Monty Python and the Holy Grail. At the very least, it's probably what it's based on. Okay, now let's continue. Um, as it has a benign nature, little security is needed for this SCP, more commonly known as Walter. SCP-524 must be kept under surveillance in order to prevent accidental damage to any vital material within the site. Whilst not under the direct care of a personnel member, Walter may be kept in a specially designed pen, roughly 5x5 five five meters, with sensors placed to notify Walter's current keeper of any escapes. Due to its abilities, there are no specific diets to be assigned to this SCP. So, Walter is a common white rabbit of the species, oh jeez, uh, Arictolagus caniculus. It can be identified by its white fur with symmetrical black markings on its body. Walter has shown the ability to be able to consume any material regardless of edibility. It eats in the same fashion as any other member of its species, though it can eat substances that are not only inedible, but dangerous. Walter has been recorded chewing through wood, steel, glass, and in one instance several kilos of radioactive material. Walter shows no adverse effects from anything it has consumed. Despite the pr obvious paradox involved, Walter has been known to fully consume its own body. What? What? It begins by chewing on its tail, slowly eating up past the hind legs and up towards the head. When it reaches up past its front legs and neck, uh, Walter somehow manages to flip its entire mouth inside out, consuming its entire head and disappearing completely. Roughly 30 minutes later, Walter reappears near the spot it had eaten itself completely whole. It is essentially unharmed by the process. What? 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 Walter was uh, discovered during a major blackout in August of 2000-something. It had disrupted a large power plant by chewing through several reactors and was discovered nibbling on a large wire. Have they considered trying to get Walter to eat SCP-682? They should probably get Walter to try to eat SCP-682. If eating itself doesn't make it die, it can probably survive SCP-682. They should try this. And that brings us up to... The eye spiders, which are Euclid. Oh, okay. That's not what I thought they were going to be. I thought they were going to be spiders inside of eyes. They're just spiders that are eyes. Like the weird spider watcher thingy from Mirror Mask. That is a great movie. Everyone should see that movie. Um, outside of testing conditions, the individual components of 525 must be stored in separate sealed containers. No more than six components may be stored in the same room or within 15 meters of each other. All currently existing components are accounted for at storage site 23 and lockers blank to blank. And the picture says, it's in possession of a disposable dude's eye. Only, only disposable dudes are authorized to handle 525. All supervising staff must wear protective eyewear during testing. 525 consists of multiple disjoined arthropod legs, 15 to si uh, 10 to 15 centimeters in length. DNA identification has been inconclusive, but the closest match so far is of, uh, to the brown recluse spider, Loxoscheles reclusa. The base of each leg ends in several minute hooks capable of perforating flesh. Uh, 525 is covered in short, fine hairs and is quite brittle. When alone or in proximity with uh, fewer than six others, it is inert. When eight when eight components of 525 are brought within range of each other, approximately 0.6 meters, the legs will immediately crawl into a group and attach themselves into a single entity referred to as one. At this stage, the speed of locomotion greatly increases and will attempt to make contact with the closest human or similar, a say addendum A. When a suitable animal is found, one will climb directly over the animal's eye. Having centered itself over a socket, four legs will secure the eyelid while the others extract the eye. Despite one's rapid movements, extreme care is taken not to damage the eye during the extraction. Data expunged, severing the optic nerves and central retina vein. Retinal vein. Once the eye is free from the owner's original owner's socket, one will implant the base of each leg into the eye. 
Close inspection shows that the hooks at the base extend, effectively rooting the leg in position. If allowed to remain, one will lay what appear to be eggs in the socket of its host before climbing off. See document A. I don't want to see either of those things! When in possession of an eye, one is no longer hostile and its movement is somewhat impeded. Curiously, one does not respond to visual stimuli suggesting that it does not use the eye for sight. Dissection of a chimpanzee eye taken by one and retained for a period of one week revealed the formation of data expunged. Over time, the eye dehydrates, eventually turning the same reddish color as 525. After two to three weeks, one will abandon the eye and begin to search for another. Addendum A. It responds to most large to moderate sized mammals. Reptiles, fish, and birds have provoked little response. When exposed to Crocodilus acutus, which is probably a crocodile, one attempted extraction, mentioned to blind the animal but otherwise failing. Thereafter, all instances of 525 have not responded to crocodiles, even those not present at the initial experiment. Document A. Observation log of uh, disposable dude 1548 after exposure to one, report compiled by Dr. Weiss dated blank blank 2000 something. Week 1. Medical staff on hand attend to disposable 1548. 14 ovoids resembling opaque toad eggs discovered embedded in the extraocular muscles. They are removed and sent to the research lab. They are placed under quarantine. The injury is healing is normal. The eggs show marginal swelling. They, dis they don't display uh, unusual discomfort. The eggs stored in the lab have deliquesced. I don't know what that means. What does that mean? This is making my eye hurt. Um, become liquid, typical during decomposition. Okay. Uh, 1548 complains of increasing phantom pressure in the socket. They demand a mirror to inspect the injury, request denied. Muscle tissue has healed over and obscured the eggs. They forcefully remove the bandages and attempt to dig into the socket. They are successfully restrained. 24 days after initial exposure, 11 fully formed components of 528 erupt from the socket and begin to coalesce data expunged. Yeah, my eye is in, like, a lot of pain from reading that, because I am really bad with things happening to people's eyes, and I'm also, uh, empathetic, so I am just, like, in pain now. In any case, this has been Anashi Sasuke, this is episode 115, I believe, of Let's Read the SP Foundation Wiki. In the next episode, we're going to start with the Valhalla Gate, and we're going to move on through Carl the Variable Dog. There's also Josie the Half-Cat, so it's just... This, this, is what, this might be a festive episode we got. Mr. Fish, Josie the Half-Cat, Carl the Variable Dog, Voodoo Putty, and Valhalla Gate. So it could, be, it could be fun. Could be terrible. Might be fun. We'll see. So, thanks again for watching. If you liked it, a like and a subscribe will be groovy. If you didn't, you need to do either one of those things. And I will see y'all in the next one. Later.